The Goat House is back and the NFL trade deadline is just about a week away. Things are really starting to heat up and in this video I'm breaking down the players that are most likely to get dealt. We'll have some landing spots as well and there'll be more videos after this covering the trade deadline so stay tuned for those but Let's get to the video. Let's start with some wide receivers that have a very realistic chance of being dealt. Starting with a big one here. Deontay Johnson, a very solid receiver, and he has an expiring deal, meaning it is a good situation for a team to acquire him because they don't have to worry about big money. They don't have to worry about long-term, you know, future contract years on that deal. So that is a big one that they're... And meanwhile, there's a bunch of teams that need a receiver, that are scrambling for a receiver. So there could end up being a bidding war. And Christian Kirk was another one, but he went down with an injury. So that leaves multiple receivers. We'll talk about some in this video. But Deontay Johnson being that big one here. And the Panthers should have somewhat of a fire sale. Doesn't sound like he's going to re-sign there. So I listed some of my top, my favorite landing spots. And then we have others here. A lot of teams that need a receiver. Pittsburgh's a big one needs a receiver. I don't see them reuniting again. So that's why they're not list listed. But... Texans have an injury with Nico Collins. He's going to come back, but now Stephon Diggs. I was kind of hoping to hear more news about his injury before recording this video. We did not get that, but it doesn't sound great, right? Uh, you know, so they could look to add another receiver, and they're on a potential Super Bowl run here this year. Uh, the Broncos could use another one. Chargers keep hearing they're looking for a receiver, even though they got rid of theirs, you know, just a couple months ago. In the Bucs, I do love the fit with the Bucs because they lost Godwin for the year and they lost Mike Evans for a little bit. And that's perfect because Johnson's really solid in the slot to replace Godwin, but he also can play outside. Question is, do the Panthers trade to a division rival? And the Bucs might be a little hesitant. They might go, hey, we're going to get Mike Evans back. And we have some of these young receivers like Jalen McMillan that we, we have, we're confident in. Cade Otten, I know he's a tight end, but he's been stepping up. So the Bucs, I'm like, oh, I want to predict that because it's such a good fit. It makes sense if he's playing different receiver, receiver positions. But some obstacles there. And then some other teams that could use a receiver. I think the others are a little more likely. But as you can tell, a lot of teams looking for a wide receiver right now. Uh, I think his value is a fourth-round pick. The Panthers are looking for a mid-round pick. Good receiver, cheap deal. You don't have to worry about the future. So I can't rule out a third round pick. But again, expiring deal has its positives and negatives here. A fourth round pick makes some sense. Anywhere between a third and a fifth, like that sweet spot fourth round. If today, right now, because there's so many receivers available, it's tough to pinpoint a, an exact prediction. Right now, depending on the Diggs injury news, I like the Texans a lot. I like the Broncos as well. I think those are the two teams that make the most sense. The Bucks probably would be up there, but again, I explained a couple obstacles there, but Johnson is a big one to watch because how likely it is and how good of a receiver he is. He can really help a team. Texans and Broncos are the main ones I'm keeping an eye out for, but a lot of teams looking for a receiver right now. Another Panthers receiver that could be dealt, the veteran Adam Thielen. I think Johnson's a little more likely, a little more appealing, younger, a little better right now, and Thielen does have one more year, even though it's not super expensive, tacked onto his deal, so that's next year. Year. Uh, but bring up the Texans again. I mean, the Texans having Stephon Diggs there, they have that connection. Not that that has a you know ton of say on if Thielen will go there or not, but again, they could use another receiver, a veteran receiver like him that can play in the slot. Uh, could be huge. Uh, I put Pittsburgh in there. Heard We're going to talk about Mike Williams. Heard their interest in them, but heard they were very, very interested in Christian Kirk before he got injured, and Kirk is more of a slot receiver. That's what Thielen is as, as, as well here, so that could make the Steelers make some sense. The Broncos, talking about them looking for another receiver to add with Cortland Sutton. They got kind of got guys getting mixed in there, some drops from you know, guys like Troy Franklin. Niners, if they are looking for a guy, I mean, they could stay put. I know IU got injured, but they have a couple, quite a few guys that can play if they're healthy. But you know, if they were looking for a guy, you know, this seems like their type of dude here. Uh, do have another option for them we'll talk about. But in the Ravens, you know, if they were going to add a guy, I think they need someone. They feel like they don't, but... A veteran polished guy like this would make some sense, but maybe they're more likely to add an outside receiver because they got a bunch of guys that could play in the slot. And then um, a couple other teams there that, that can make a play for him, I listed as well. He's a tricky one. I said Johnson, probably a fourth round pick, anywhere from three to five, but probably a fourth round pick. And then uh, I'd say a fifth round pick for Thielen, but it could be a six because towards the end of his career, just coming off an injury. So the more I talk, I'm maybe a sixth, fifth round pick with the seventh going back. We could see a swap here, but Texans, Steelers, Broncos. I mean, those are the main three I'm looking here. We talked about Johnson right now, like the Texans and the Broncos, Texans, Steelers, Broncos make a lot of sense. Again, I, I wanted to hear more about the Diggs injury. I'm going to check to see, no, nothing yet. Uh, that's playing a big part here uh, on if the Texans need to add a receiver, but 
those are the teams that make a lot of sense. We can have some firm predictions later in the week or you know, right up to the trade deadline. But again, we'll have more. I have another a part two of this video coming with more of the surprising trade candidates that can happen. But we have a lot to talk about in this video. But Thielen's another one to watch. And then Mike Williams, who we fully expect to get dealt. I mean, the Jets are struggling right now. They need another draft pick, even though it's not going to be a big one here. Uh, and, and he's not playing for them right now. They added Devontae Adams. So we, who we heard was connected to the to a potential Mike Williams trade was the Steelers. Chargers and the Saints. Chargers does not make a ton of sense to me, but you keep hearing it's possible. They dumped them. Now they're going to trade a pick for them. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. I know the financials are a little different, a little more favorable now, I suppose. But And the Saints are really struggling, so should they be buyers? So that's why the Steelers probably make the most sense, but they were very much interested in Christian Kirk, it turns out, before he got injured. Could they be involved in multiple guys, not just Mike Williams, or could they ditch that, turn their attention to a Thielen, someone else like that, I suppose it's possible, but he should go for very little, it's kind of too clear that the Jets are trading him, they lose leverage, 7th round pick, 6th maximum, I, I like the Steelers for him, but they might want to get someone even better, but Arthur Smith's offense always features that those kind of contested catch guys, and that I think that works well at Russell Wilson, uh, you know, as well, you know, another deep ball guy that can work off play action and get a contested catch. So makes some sense and should be very, very cheap. Talking about a seventh round pick, a potential swap, six at the most here for Mike Williams in the Jets. Another wide receiver that could be dealt, KJ Osborne. His name's been uh, thrown out there a bit. Kendrick Bourne, another one. It's going to take a little bit more to pry him from the Patriots. We'll likely include him in my next video with a little more of the surprise candidates that could be dealt. But Osborne, yeah, hasn't done much of anything for the Patriots. And two seasons ago, he was pretty damn solid for the Vikings. So a team that maybe has some, a better passing game, a little more of a polished team, could use him, and it could be very cheap. Seventh-round pick or a swap of picks here, a young receiver. So bring up some of the teams we've talked about. I like the Texans, Saints, Buccaneers, Broncos, and Steelers most for a guy like Osborne. It could be a team that's looking more so for uh, quality depth, you know, or maybe looking to add multiple receivers, a starter in depth. So those are the teams I like for him. So definitely uh, one to watch here. Cheap one in terms of, uh, you know, the financials, you know, cap hit slash salary and, and uh, in terms of the compensation as well. So Osborne definitely one to keep an eye on uh, as the trade deadline approaches. A lot, a lot of receivers here. And one more receiver to talk about in this video, Traylon Burks, the Titans receiver. The Titans could already kind of feels like they're having a little bit of a sale going on. The team isn't uh, doing too well right now. And Burks just hasn't been playing for them and just hasn't worked out. He's going to be very cheap. Seventh round pick, swap a pick, somewhere around those lines. But you you think he has some upside. And he's a unique type player. He's a guy that, especially in Arkansas, just get the ball to in any way. Really tough, really physical after the catch. I think he would fit Arthur Smith's offense, who he actually came from Tennessee a few years ago. With the Steelers would make a lot of sense with their play style. San Francisco, this is a poor man's and a bigger version of Debo Samuel, but a very poor man's, Not obviously not as quick as Debo. But his best football, especially in college at Arkansas, was used in those types of ways. So that would make sense for the Niners. Like They have their starters right now with Debo. Jawan Jennings when he's back. Ricky Pearsall looks pretty damn good. Uh, you know They have Kittle catch passes as well. But getting a depth guy that can be used in different ways, I love that for the Niners. Fits the Ravens' play style as well as they could use some depth. Uh, the Buccaneers kind of take a chance on him. Uh, they could use some receiver help there, and the Chargers kind of have that small ball play style that Harbaugh, you know, really, really like. So those are just some really good fits. Like, he fits their play style. I think if he's going to revive his career, I really like those teams. The Steelers and the Niners really stand out a little bit more than, than the other ones there for Burks. But, yeah, Titans are a team to watch. Could they have a little bit of a fire sale? They kind of already started, so it would almost – take a couple more trades for the to be considered a fire a fire sale or some sort of trade deadline sale there so they're an interesting team right now that should be um moving on from players that aren't probably going to be a part of the future guys like jeffrey simmons most definitely could be part of the future uh you know because they're looking to turn this thing around somewhat quick because they have a pretty good defense pretty good draft class uh they just need that quarterback right now all right, I'm sick of talking about those wide receivers Let's talk about zaria smith the browns pass rusher who is uh being talked about quite a bit right now, rumors floating around him and where he could end up. Quite a few teams are looking for a pass rusher. And again, there could be a little bit of a bidding war because you have a veteran, a solid veteran. Yes, he's not as good as he was a few years ago, and he does have durability concerns. But 
since there's not too many guys available, like Max Crosby's not going to be avail available. Trey Hendrickson, very unlikely to be available. Miles Garrett's not going to be available. Not too many solid, like for sure, starting options. Darius Smith is one of them, so teams could be scrambling for a guy like like him. The Lions, we know, with Aiden Hutchinson out for the season, that's a team that, that can make a run in the Super Bowl. They just got to do anything they can to make this team better without crushing you know themselves so you're not training a big pick. So that would make sense for Smith. He's been a little bit of a hybrid in terms of uh, what types of schemes he's fit. So he pretty scheme versatile, but it's going to come down to these teams thinking like, does he fit our scheme perfectly? Um, but the Lions definitely are a team to watch. The Eagles could use another piece. I thought a guy like Nolan Smith stepped up this week. Bryce Huff should only continue to get better, but he he's not going to play every snap. Obviously, and they obviously they have Jeff, uh, excuse me, Josh Sweat starting. And but the Eagles definitely could be looking for a pass rusher. The Falcons have been very underwhelming. Get after the quarterback. It's Judon, and he's been underwhelming. But every, uh, other than that, definitely could use some help. Cardinals have had several injuries even before the season started with Adjulari, and they have more now. And they're just scrambling for a piece. And they're winning the NFC West right now. And they can compete. They're looking pretty decent, so they got to make this team better. In the Niners, I keep hearing, watch out for them adding defense, defense, as much defense as they can, and they definitely could use another pass rusher here, so I could definitely see that. And there are other teams that could use a pass rusher. Uh, Miami is one I thought about putting in the top landing spots. They, they, If you look at their roster, they have a number of guys that can play. Injuries are, hu- are, are a huge thing right now, so I definitely could see them adding one, but should they be buyers right now? I mean, they could definitely turn things around. They can catch up in the AFC uh, East. I mean, it's not tough to get second place in that division right now. Uh, Seattle could be looking for one. The Bears, I, the Bear, I keep hearing the Bears and Montez Sweat had a small injury at the end of the last game there, but I think he's, he's going to be fine. But the Bears don't need to add defense, in my opinion. They need, if, they're, if anything, add offense. I still think that's kind of a team of the future, but they're, they're not afraid to make some interesting trades. So... Uh, the Bucks could use a guy, but I'm not thinking they're going to be desperate there. Maybe more so in the secondary. Uh, Cowboys. I guess the issue with the Cowboys is once Lawrence and Parsons are back, those are the starters, you know. But they're out right now, so that's the tough part. I think out of those others, the Dolphins and the Seahawks probably make the most sense. But I love the teams I listed at the top. I think he ends up on one of those teams. Uh, the Cardinals need one badly right now, badly, and so does the other teams. But uh, so that's that's interesting. Do they want a veteran? They're still a pretty you know, like a pretty young team. I keep hearing the Niners interested in pass rushers because not as good as he was a couple years ago. Has durability concerns. Fifth round pick makes some sense. Fourth round's a little rich, but possible. I think you can get him for a sixth as well. I think it's possible. I look at that sweet spot right in the middle there with a fifth round pick. But his name is all over the place right now. Watch out for Zadarius Smith. The team's desperate for some pass rush help. Another Browns pass rusher. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say they trade both those guys. Hey, maybe if they lost to the Ravens and the season was over, then maybe they just, hey, sell everybody. They already moved on from the guys, but they're going to try to win some football games. Now, I don't think they'll trade both these edge rushers opposite of Miles Garrett. They want to keep one, but I think one of them ends up going elsewhere, and Okoronkwo is a younger, healthier, um, cheaper option compared to Zadarius Smith here, so... Some similar teams I list. I mean, again, the Dolphins could be pretty serious uh, at a guy like this because, you know, do they want to add a shirt thing starter when they feel like when healthy those shirt thing starters are on the roster already? So maybe he makes a little more sense than Smith. So we list some of the similar teams here. Um, Cardinals make a lot of sense. The, you know, maybe the Lions, Lions are a little tricky. They like the the they're like a homegrown team, right? They draft those guys. They they. And they help them develop. And so maybe they want to work with the guys that they already brought in. And maybe they just want to add a rotational guy. So this would be more of the option compared to Smith. So I can see any either route, I should say, for the, for the Lions. Um, Okwanko could be, a, could be a guy for a team that, yeah, absolutely desperate for a starter. But more so for a team that needs a pass rusher, but more of a high-end rotational guy. But he's a little sneaky. He can be solid. He can be a starter. Uh, so a six-round pick makes some sense for him. Anywhere between five and seven. I think seven would be a steal, but six round pick makes some sense for him. But he is a younger, I, I guess, a younger, safer, I guess, cheaper option than uh, Zedaria Smith there. So I, I think the Browns trade one of those guys. I, re- I really do. One of those guys probably goes. It's interesting now the Browns just beat the Ravens. So what do they do? They stay in stand pat? Do they push to try to win football games and turn the season, season around like they did last year? 
We'll see. And again, stay tuned for more of these trade deadline videos. We're going to be talking about more trade candidates than just these in this video. Another video on the way and some last second predictions. We also have our weekly pick show Tuesday night. Power rankings on Tuesday. Loads of content. So subscribe. Turn notifications on. But Genevieve on Clowney, back to the Panthers. They could have a fire sale. They're awful. The worst team in football right now. They can sell, sell, sell. Clowney isn't going to be a part of their... They're in a rebuild process still. They're not going to be a part of that. He's been underwhelming for them. Teams need pass rush there's a lot of teams that need a pass rush you got a polished veteran one here look at seattle i heard they could look for a pass rusher mike mcdonald's over there he coached Clowney last year where he kind of revived his career that makes a lot of sense they get a good fit for the dolphins uh really solid fit off the edge for them if they're looking for a starter right now the other question is they potentially have starters once they're healthy on their roster so what happens if those guys come back I think for Clowney, they would they would take a chance and take him. Then Detroit, who could use a starter out there, obviously, in Arizona. We talked about it. They are thin at the position. And the Niners, heard they could be looking for a guy. I think those are the most likely landing spots. And then we see some guy, some teams down here as well. And then could he end up going back to the Ravens? I probably should have listed them um, as well. But I think a fifth-round pick could be a fourth because he's a polished veteran, but he's underwhelming right now. The Panthers having a sale. Fifth-round pick makes some sense there. But could he reunite with Mike McDonald? I, again, I do like the fit with the Dolphins as well, how they run their defense. Uh, the Lions, that's the Lions are the talk with with uh, the pass rushers to replace Hutchinson. So could they go for a big, you know, a, um, a big addition here? Not on Hutchinson's level, obviously, but it would be a big addition. And I heard Buffalo linked to Clowney. I personally, I think the Buffalo defense is playing well, and their pass defense specifically is playing very well. So I don't know if it's necessary for them to do that, but uh, I, I keep hearing hit them with Clowney. It's just, I don't fully think it makes a ton of sense. Not that I completely disagree with it, but I had to throw them in there because of that. But Clowney, a big one. The Panthers in Clowney, big ones to watch here as the deadline approaches. Cam Robinson, the Jags offense tackle is a very, very interesting one because when tackles potentially are available at this time, it's it's huge for teams that could be desperate because uh, it's kind of rare that there's decent ones with experience that are available. But I'd say he's a little less likely than the other guys we're talking about. But, man, the Jags are struggling. They lost again. Maybe they're playing a little bit better these last two weeks, but they lost again. They lost Christian Kirk. Brian Thomas Jr. now injured. He can I keep hearing different things. He can be back this week or it could be four weeks from now. I doubt it's that long. Uh, but maybe it's time to throw in the towel and, and the offense line hasn't been good enough. I think they're going to try to find a future left tackle other than Robinson and Walker little. They do have Walker little out there to take his spot. Uh, so he could be Dell. I would suggest if the Jackson get something decent for him, I, I'd say do it. And it's a little tricky to figure out the value because he isn't playing the best ball right now. Um, you know, has some p injuries recently and in the past, but when experienced tackles are available, they go for like a premium. They go so I could see a third round pick, which to me is an overpay, but I could see it just because he's a tackle. He has experience. He has some good play, not recently, but under his belt. So I can see anywhere between a third and a fifth round pick. I you know I don't think it's worth the Jags trading him for a fifth round pick. But if they can get a fourth for him, which which I think makes sense, I think would make sense for them. The Vikings have been mentioned. I wouldn't agree with the Vikings doing this, but I think they they could. Uh, because Darisaw is out for the year. The Vikings are looking to contend right now. They started 5-0. and They lost two straight. They need a tackle. Uh, I mean, Darisaw to Questenberry is an insane drop-off. So this would be an upgrade from their current tackle right now. It just wouldn't make a ton of sense. It would be a Super Bowl or bust type move for them. I don't know if they're built to win the Super Bowl. Yes, they started 5-0. and Yes, they've shown flashes. But Darnold and that defense doesn't, that doesn't play as well against veteran teams, veteran quarterbacks. I don't think they're built for the Super Bowl, so I wouldn't agree with this move, but they're a team that could use a tackle. Commanders are a little beat up at the position right now. The Bears are a little beat up, and um, they could possibly use a guy as well. Cincinnati very beat up. Seattle beat up and just not good enough right now. Could see that. The Giants beat up. So listen, all these teams are beat up at the position, as you can tell. The Giants may not be worth it because... Yeah, I'd say it's not worth it at all because there are they a team that's going to win right now? No, and then you're going to want to put Andrew Thomas back in there next year. So maybe they're a little bit more of a wild card. I think Washington probably a little bit more of a wild card. Look at Minnesota, Chicago, Cincinnati, and Seattle. Bengals really got some injuries at, at, at the tackle position. Orlando Brown's going to be back soon, but Trent Brown, uh, you know, Mims has durability concerns. I would say Minnesota and Seattle probably stand out the most, then probably Chicago, Cincinnati. 
more I talk about this one, maybe I realize more it's it's not as likely as the other ones in this video, but he has been brought up quite a bit in the Jaguars. Jaguars should have some sort of sale here as the season doesn't feel great, especially with the injuries piling on top of how the season has went. So Cam Robinson, uh, a big one to watch, actually. Let's talk about a couple running backs. Miles Sanders, will there be a taker? That's the question. Uh, the Panthers would love to trade him. He was pretty active in that last game, especially as a pass catcher. So that could help his case, I guess, to get traded. But the question isn't, will the Panthers deal him? They want to deal him. The Panthers. The question is, is there a taker? Is there somebody that's going to give the Panthers something to take on him? Uh, and there could be Cowboys badly need a running game going right now. So I, they're the number one team that could use a running back. The Raiders running game is awful. So maybe they need a running back a little bit more, but they're not in a, but they're not in a buyer's mode right now. Uh, San Francisco. Yeah. McCaffrey targeting come back in a couple weeks. So that's great. Jordan Mason just can't get right right now. And Grendo does look pretty good. They're a little bit more of a wild card. Uh, but could use another option to be safe. There's a team that lives and die by running the football, so why not? And the Eagles, a little more of a wild card. Do they necessarily need him? Probably not, but uh, they might be overdoing Saquon Barkley. You know, save him for the playoffs. I'm not saying don't use him, but a big part of their offense. But, man, it, they're, they're going to overdo it with him, and Sanders knows that offense. Get another option in there. They do have options, but is there are there enough teams that need a running back that badly i think if he goes it's gonna be a swap of picks uh, or or a seventh round pick uh for miles sanders but i think a team man i would really like the niners i don't think they do it to be honest but i would really like it uh add another piece in there that guy that could that's proved he can maybe catch the ball a little bit uh because jordan mason's been really good but not really catch the ball grendo looks actually look, looks like he could catch the ball a little bit better or just get open um but why not i mean it's a team that's making a push Mason's dealing with the shoulder. Again, he cannot get right. Uh, McCaffrey, you don't know what um, what's going to happen there in the near future. And you know, Do they trust Grendo to be the full-time guy? He looked good against the Cowboys. It is the Cowboys. I, that one makes a lot of sense. I don't think it happens, though, but it makes a lot of sense to me. But Sanders is one the Panthers would like to sell right now. Another running back with some experience and still young with upside to watch is Khalil Herbert. The Bears, I think, would be willing to shop him away because they have a number of running backs they use remember they added swift on top of the other backs and herbert's barely playing and remember he was like almost a feature back for them a couple years ago uh so same teams here uh i'd actually say i, I meant to remove philly from this list to be honest but um so more so the cowboys raiders and niners so i, I wouldn't pay attention to the eagles on that one it was just more so the sanders connection uh but another one that can go for a seventh round pick a decent young running back Cowboys would make sense. The, the Raiders would make sense because he could be their long-term option as well. They get him in now, give him a look. And again, I think the Niners need a running back more than they think, so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I apologize for the Eagles being left on there. I, I didn't really... And again, they could use another piece to kind of give Barkley some breathers, but they kind of they kind of got options there. It was more They were more so just listed for Sanders because the connection, he knows the offense, at least most of it. Um so we'll see what happens with these running backs here. Talk about some corners. Got a quite a quite a few of them here. Jonathan Jones, a pretty big one. Really good experience. Solid corner. Yeah, maybe he's declined a little bit. And he should be pretty cheap right now because the Patriots aren't they're playing him, but not a ton. It's a guy that has experience in the slot and outside. There are quite a few teams that could use a corner. Green Bay. I like the fit of Green Bay and Jonathan Jones. They're playing a lot more man coverage this year. Jonathan Jones, really solid experience in man coverage. Jair Alexander just went down again. It doesn't seem like it's anything significant, but they could use, and they're trying to win a Super Bowl, right? They could use another piece in there. Jones makes a lot of sense as a fit to me, at least. Uh, the Ravens have a number of injuries at corner. Cowboys are very thin at the position on their roster. They will get Bland back. They've been running a little more zone than they used to, but they still run some man. Uh, the Vikings, they already got another former Patriots corner, Gilmore, who's actually struggling recently, so they could use them. Uh, Chargers would be a pretty solid fit. They've had, they're have had a little thin on corners right now. Buccaneers, pretty bad play. I mean, McCollum's been pretty solid this year, but pretty bad play from the secondary right now, and the Chiefs have some injuries, and they're not afraid to trade. They just traded for a Patriot, Josh Uche, earlier. But I, I like the Packers as a fit here, but I look at those teams. The Chargers make sense as a fit. Um, there are a few other teams, but yeah, Kind of keep in mind scheme fit. Jones, I prefer a team that runs a little bit of a man, of a man defense more so than the zone uh, defenses. And I did list some zone teams, but 
Uh, so mostly the teams that mix it up. You know, the Bucks are you know a lot of zone, but the Colts are a team that can use a corner. They're like all zone right now. So Bucks are, are really too, but they could be desperate. Uh, but I think he is more talented than a six round pick. But I think you can get him for a six round pick because he is not being used much. I'm surprised he's not being talked about. Like people like the experts that are listing. These guys will be traded. Not really listing him right now, but they're saying Patriots are sellers. Watch for them. I'd watch for Jonathan Jones. They're playing him less. Keep bringing up that Packers fit, but a couple other teams there. Um, so watch for him. We'll talk about some more corners here. Tredavious White just sounds like the Rams and him are trying. He's not playing for them right now. So trying to reach some sort of an agreement. Try, trying to ship him off. Could be a swap of picks, a future seventh round pick. Something very, very cheap. But he is more of your... Zone corner compared to Jonathan Jones. He When he was with Buffalo, a lot of cover two. The Rams run a ton of zone coverage, cover four, cover three, mainly cover four. So um, he's more of the zone compared to Jonathan Jones here. So the Ravens mix it up. The Vikings mix it up. Buccaneers run a lot of zone, so that would make sense. The Colts run a lot of zone. Cowboys are trying to gear more towards zone than the past of man. Chargers mix it up. We saw a bit of man. The Packers mix it up as well, but we see a bit of man from them. Um, so very cheap for him. Yeah, the Ravens. Um, make a lot of, people mentioned the Chiefs. Chiefs are man and cover. He could fit with the cover two that they run. So I probably should have listed the Chiefs as well. Uh, but yeah, Ravens, Vikings, Bucks, those teams really stand out. I wish I listed the Chiefs here, but uh, th- those top three teams uh, that I have listed up there really stand out there. But I don't know if anyone's dying to get Tredavious White, has injury concern, and he's not playing nearly as well as he used to. He can't really get on the field like he used to. But he was a, the Buffalo Bills were like strictly covered. Like they were running more cover two than anyone. So looking for a team that runs quite a bit. The Vikings run quite a bit of cover two under Brian Flores. Uh, but this has actually helped them. I, they would probably still start Gilmore and Griffin, Murphy in the slot, and that also could play outside. But we'll see. Uh, I think Jonathan Jones should be should be a little more you know wanted I, I suppose. But here's another corner for you, and I got one more. A little bit of a smaller name corner, but believe it or not, like he actually could have a little more value in Brandon Eccles. That is from the Jets. He, he could have a little more value in Travis White. Like durability concerns, kind of on the you know on the decline here. You get a sneaky rotation corner, depth corner here. Uh, that's been in a pretty good defense behind some really good corners in the Jets. I think that makes some sense. They run a lot of zone there as well. Buccaneers, Niners are one. They, they would be more interested in a high-end ro- uh, depth rotation corner rather than a starter right now. Uh, Cowboys, he's more so teams that need a corner, but they're not desperate for a starter. They got some guys coming back, or they got guys they feel like could start for them. So um, that that's where I list some of those teams. Could end up going to his own team as well, but... Um, yeah, he's one to really watch out for. We already hear his name come up and teams being interested in him. He's cheap. He's healthier, I suppose, more than a guy like Tredavious White. But Bucks, Niners, Cowboys, I think those first three teams uh, really, really stand out there. If the Rams move on from White, they could use another depth piece. But those first three teams really, really stand out to me. Uh, good fit with the Bucks. Niners, Cowboys could use a high-end uh, depth piece there, but should be pretty cheap. Seventh-round pick. Six round pick, a swap of picks, perhaps, but one to watch there. And one more for this video, but I am gonna make another video. The plan is a similar concept, but guys that are a little bit, little less likely to be dealt, but could be big splash moves. But Sebastian Joseph Day of the Tennessee Titans hasn't really played a ton for them, but the Titans could be sellers, and there are some teams uh, that are looking for a defensive tackle, and there aren't a ton available. Look at the Niners; they could definitely use an interior piece. The Cardinals. Uh, Cowboys, Commanders, Rams, and uh, Texans. So, uh, but you know, potential teams that I, I really like the Niners, Niners, Cardinals, Rams, Texans, or Rams. I say if I had to pick three, Niners, Cardinals, Rams really, really stand out. He should be really cheap, future seventh round pick or a swap of picks. Titans just gathering some more picks here, a guy that they don't really need as they are kind of in a retool process and the season is pretty much lost. But yeah, the Niners make a lot of sense with him. Like I said, I really like those teams I mentioned. I like the teams, all, all the teams listed up there, but the Niners, Cardinals, and Rams, I, I think really, really stand out for a guy like that. It's again, it's going to be a cheap pick. He come in and help those teams win, uh, help them where they need someone on the interior defensive line. So that wraps up the most likely candidates. 
There are some guys that are really close behind. That maybe he's more of surprise candidates as well. We'll do that in the next video. I'll have some scenarios in a future video leading up to the deadline. Maybe some last second prediction predictions. We have you kept up to date with the latest thoughts, rumors, predictions on our Twitter slash X. So check that out. Link pinned in the comments. We have loads of weekly coverage for the NFL. So join us. Like, subscribe to Nope King Zombie. Much appreciated. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.